Well, thanks everybody again for coming to the Texas Sports Hall of Fame Book, Book Festival, the inaugural, and uh, we're going to wrap up today's sessions with Tim Price. And I've got, uh, let's see, Tim is the author of two books, Texas Sports Trivia and Shooting for the Record, Adolph Tapawan, Tom Fry, and Sharp Shooting's Forgotten Controversy. He has been on the writing staffs of the San Antonio Express News and Fort Worth Star-Telegram. His writing also has appeared in the New York Times, Associated Press, NBA.com, and D Magazine. He was born in Dallas and now lives in San Antonio. All right. Thank you very much. Um, thanks to the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. This is a great idea. Uh, I look forward to many more to come. I don't know if I'm going to have a book next year, but maybe in two years I'd love to come back. Uh, it's, it's awesome. The setup is great. Um, so uh, to Jay, thank you very much for setting this up. There's Jay right there, just in time for his thank you. A thumbs up, Jay. <laughs> John Brock with uh, Texas Tech University Press is here, and I really appreciate uh, the press. Dr. Jorge Eber uh, and many others with the press. Uh, it's been wonderful uh, to have my book published through there. Uh, and as I come to the Texas Sports Hall of Fame, uh, I noticed the list of uh, nominees for induction for this year and am thrilled to see uh, Johnny Bailey uh, as, a, as a nominee. Uh, as a young 20-something sports writer, Johnny was one of the first stars that I followed. Uh, uh, Johnny uh, was running back for, uh, as one of the former players said, it's still Texas A&I. Uh, you'll know it as Texas A&M Kingsville. Uh, Johnny, that freshman year after uh, playing for Houston Yates, uh, which beat a tough Odessa Permian team in the state championship shut him out. Uh, Johnny ran for 2,000 yards his freshman year at Texas A&I. Uh, his backfield mate with Heath was Heath Sherman. Heath was from El Campo, Wharton area. And uh, Heath ran for 1,500 yards that year as well. Can, you can imagine a backfield in the days when the pass, the forward pass, was starting its revival. This was not a wishbone offense. Uh, and these guys ran for more than 3,500 yards together. Uh, it, was, it was incredible. Uh, if you feel like you missed it, I did too. I didn't cover the team until the next year. <laughs> and Johnny ran for 1,500 yards, and Heath still cracked the 1,000-yard barrier. They were an incredible team to watch in what was the Houston Veer uh, that Bill Yeoman at University of Houston started, and the A&I folks turned into a I-formation Houston Veer. And our, what sort of team was that? I remember going to the locker room in San Angelo after they uh, handled a pretty good Angelo State team on the road and talked to a strapping fellow who wasn't that big uh, with no shirt putting on his, uh, his overalls. His name was John Randall. And if you remember John Randall, he played for the Minnesota Vikings. And I believe he's in the NFL Hall of Fame. Uh, so that was, uh, that was quite a team, uh, an out of the way place. Kingsville, Texas, to see this sort of thing. And uh, an out of the way place uh, is shooting for the record. Uh, let's see here. I've lost my, uh, my presentation. Yeah, I have, I have no, uh, okay, here we go. Let's do it like this. Okay, out of the way in that you've been seeing a lot today about football, baseball, basketball, the mainstream sports, which are all great. Uh, shooting for the record is in the uh, realm of the shooting sports. Um, come on. Well. I'm hopeful that it'll work. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, what I'll do is I'll get into the uh, 
basically there are two as the title infers, Adolf Tupperwein, or the subtitle, Adolf Tupperwein and Tom Fry, relates that there are two major principles uh, in this tale. Uh, Adolf Tupperwein, uh, who was born in Bernie, and in 1966 was inducted into the Texas Sports Hall of Fame uh, as the greatest marksman of his era. And he indeed may have been, ah, here we go. Thank you. Uh, uh, greatest marksman of his era, may have been the greatest marksman of all time. Uh, born of a, a German immigrant, he was born in Bernie and lived most of his life in San Antonio. During a 36-year career, and that's according to the induction papers uh, with the Texas Sports Hall of Fame, I found he started back in 1896, really. He shot, his shooting career was about 50 years. Uh, I have a video that I can show you as a 70-year-old man, he was doing barrel rolls and picking up his gun and still shooting a target that had been thrown into the air. So he shot well into his 70s. Uh, he is credited with setting 14 world records. He was a sought-after shooting instructor. He taught his bride Lizzie to shoot, famously known as Plinky. She broke records of Annie Oakley and was an inaugural inductee into the Trap Shooting Hall of Fame up in Ohio, the National Trap Shooting Hall of Fame. The peak of his career saw participation in the Grand American Handicap. That's uh, Trap Shooting's answer to the U.S. Open Golf Tournament. Um, that grew sixfold from 1900 to 1907. That was, that was Mr. Tupperwine's peak, really. Um, so is shooting guns a sport? It sure is. That's Kim Rohde. She won the bronze medal at the Rio 2016 Olympics, making her the first Olympian, the first Olympian of any country to win a medal on five different continents, the first summer Olympian to win an individual medal at six consecutive summer games, and the first woman to medal in six consecutive Olympics. So the shooting sports uh, are still out there and a lot of, uh, a lot of interest in it still, uh, particularly when you have someone like Kim Rohde. There's a member of the shooting, uh, Team USA shooting uh, from Caldwell, uh, in fact. So, and uh, I mentioned Plinky. Uh, her given name was Elise Servate, Servetti. She was from Germany. She came over as a two-year-old and uh, grew up in New Haven, Connecticut, where the Winchester plant was. And she worked uh, on the assembly line, and that is how she met Adolf, who began working for Winchester around 1901, uh, after uh, sharpshooting for a number of years uh, around San Antonio and down into Mexico. Uh, she was the first woman to compete for and win a U.S. military marksmanship medal in 1906. She was in line. People thought that it was one of the bloke's girlfriend uh, uh, that was in line. And when she got to the front with a Craig Jorgensen, which weighed about nine pounds, they said, you can't shoot that thing. Uh, they were convinced otherwise. They were convinced to look at their bylaws, which said women were not restricted. Uh, so she shot, and she won that military marksmanship medal uh, in 1906. Actually, it's 1903 uh, uh, in Seagirt, New Jersey. While competing against men, she won several state and circuit competitions, including the 1908 Texas State Shoot at Austin, obviously the first woman to do so. Uh, she was the first woman to compete in the Grand American Handicap in 1907, and by 1914 still was the only female competitor in a field of 500 men. In 1916, she broke a man's endurance and accuracy shooting record for a 12-gauge shotgun when she hit 1,952 clay targets from 2,000 attempts all in less than five and a half hours, and that was in 1916 in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, that 12-gauge shotgun will put 20 pounds of pressure on your shoulder every time you fire it. Do the math. <laughs> she had a bruised up shoulder halfway through it. She had a, a, a blister on her hand. They put a Band-Aid on it, a, a wrap, and she tried a few rounds with that, a, a few brackets with that. She said, let's take it off. I can't shoot with this thing, and she continued shooting. Uh, it's pretty grisly. Uh, so there they are, the wonderful Topper Wines. I did not misspell Topper Wine. That was their stage name. Uh, it just looked better. They were Tops. That's what they called them, the Tops. And they toured the country for Winchester, showing off the ammunition, the gun, the firearms, and their great shooting skill. Uh, I mentioned world records, and this is the focus of the book. 
Uh, the focus of the book is a sporting event, a, a, an achievement in the realm of sports that I cannot fathom. This is sh sports shooting's equivalent to swimming the English Channel or uh, climbing Mount Everest uh, if you're a mount climb, uh, mountain climber. They set incredible records, both Ad Topperwine and Tom Fry, uh, shooting records with 22 caliber rifles. In 1907 in San Antonio, this is the old International Fairgrounds, a beautiful building, sadly no longer there, close to the site where Teddy Roosevelt trained his Rough Riders uh, before they went off uh, to their fame at San Juan Hill. Um, in 1907 at San Antonio, Topperwine used 10 days to shoot at 72,500 targets while missing nine. Those are two and a quarter inch wooden blocks. Just think of an alphabet block and you've got an idea of what he was shooting at. Uh, he missed nine out of that 72,500 over 10 days. You can do the math, more than 7,000 targets per day. Uh, and 52 years later, 1959, outside Reno, Nevada, really it was in the middle of nowhere, uh, Fry, Tom Fry, fired upon 100,010 targets and missed six over 13 days. Uh, this is mind-boggling. <laughs> Uh, and really, 